Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Caroline Garnett McGraw, and I'm with The Clearing, a non 12 step residential dual diagnosis addiction treatment center. Translation We teach you how to not hate yourself anymore. So, today we're going to talk about projections what they are, how they function, where they're really operating in your life. So, to start off, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Have you ever been in a situation where you know that your reaction is way more than is justified? You're way overreacting, but you don't know why. Have you ever found a certain person just super annoying <laughs> to you, even though you want to be a bigger person and you want to rise above it, but you're just really struggling and your friends don't seem to get it. They don't feel the same way. They think this person is just fine. They're not bothered at all. And you think, what's wrong with me? Why am I such a terrible person? Well, the good news is you may not be a terrible person at all. You may just be dealing with some projections that are trying to bring themselves to your attention. Now, before we go any farther, let's define our terms here. So what are projections? What are we talking about? Projections are when we put disowned qualities of ourselves onto other people. So those, these are the things that we don't want to hold on to, and we assign them to other people to take them on for us. And often those people act as mirrors for us, showing us the aspects of ourselves that we don't want to see. And we tend to get mad at them for being these mirrors in our lives. But the issue really isn't with them. The issue begins with us and with these disowned qualities that we're putting on to other people because we don't want to have to accept the reality that they exist within us. So once again, projections are when we put our disowned aspects of ourselves onto other people. So that's what's happening. Cool idea to think about here. Projections are actually trying to help you. They might seem like this insidious thing of, oh, this is so weird. I'm blinded by my own denial. But actually, projections are your soul trying to get your attention and point out the parts of yourself that you need to look at and that you need to address. They're kind of like the indicator light on your car. It's like, check service now. <laughs> projections are kind of your soul's way of saying, here's something that you need to look at <laughs> and shed a light on within yourself. So what are some examples of projections? Uh, a funny one might be if you are, for example, you might be in an argument with your spouse or with your kids and you might find yourself yelling, I can't stand people who are loud. And of course you yourself are being loud, ironically enough. Or you might think, you know, I hate that this person always interrupts me. And that might not seem as obvious because you think, well, I don't interrupt other people in conversation. I don't do that. But the question we teach our participants in our program, we teach them to ask themselves this question. How do I do this either with myself, with others, or with God slash reality? So to take this interrupting example, say this guy really annoys you because he's always interrupting your conversations. And you think, well, I don't do that. I don't interrupt other people while they're speaking. And so you get to feel kind of morally superior to him for a little while. But if you're really willing to do the work, it's about opening up and asking yourself, okay, well, maybe I don't interrupt people when they're speaking verbally, but how do I interrupt myself? And sit with that. Do I interrupt others in another way, not in verbal conversation? Or, this is really a mind-bending one, how do I interrupt reality? How do I interrupt God as I understand God? So those are the questions. When you think it doesn't apply to you, check those three levels. Chances are you can probably find at least one example of how it applies to you within the levels of self, others, and reality slash God. So that's what projections are. Those are some examples, but how do we start to work with them? Say you've identified a projection and you're willing to work with it. What do you do? 
So the first thing to do is approach it with love and compassion. Again, as we said, projections are not evidence that you're evil or you're bad. They're evidence that your soul is trying to get your attention to work on something to heal and to grow and to evolve. And that's great. That's actually good news. So start from this point of, okay, I'm actually being guided in a good way. This is a positive thing. All right. I can have some compassion for myself. I'm learning. You know, you wouldn't scream at a little kid probably who was just learning how to walk if they were falling down. You wouldn't get in their face and be like, shape up. You should know how to walk already. It's like, well, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, you're learning how to walk. That's not a problem. That's just that you're learning. So anyway, approaching with that loving, compassionate, open heart. Take a look at those projections. If it helps you to write them down, maybe write an angry rant <laughs> against something that really bothers you and then identify the projections that are in it. And once you've discovered a projection, realize that what it actually is, is a judgment against yourself that's directed at another person. So the way to heal and move forward from projections is to forgive the judgment. So we have done, we've done another video on this as well, which I will find and I will link um, as well. So you can have that as a resource, but the way to work with judgments is to offer yourself forgiveness. So the framework that we teach is I forgive myself for judging this other person as fill in the blank. And the truth is fill in the blank. So to use the example, say, let's talk about that guy who was interrupting you. So when he interrupted, you judged him as insensitive. Say, say that was the judgment. He's interrupting. He's so insensitive. Okay. I forgive myself for judging this person as insensitive. And the truth is, and then you sit with it and you wait for the truest truth to emerge. And maybe your truest truth, if it's, you know, if it's a stranger, maybe it's something like, I don't really know if he was being insensitive. Maybe there's another explanation. Maybe he's insecure. Maybe that's what's really at play here. Or, you know, if you know this person really well, maybe the truth is that you know that their mind was on something else, that they weren't intending it to come across that way. Or maybe, maybe they, you still perceive them as being insensitive, but maybe you also know that that is the best that they have to offer right now. And so maybe your truth is that they were doing the best that they could. That can be your truth as well. So that's the forgiving yourself for judging the other person. Then you forgive yourself for judging yourself as insensitive. So that framework goes, I forgive myself for judging myself as insensitive. And the truth is, and then you look into your heart and really feel what's true for you. Maybe a truth that comes up for me a lot that you might relate to is the truth is that I am learning and that I'm growing. And that means that I'm not done yet, <laughs> that I am a work in progress. So I hope that is helpful for you. And I hope that as you work with these projections and the judgments that underlie them, just remember that they are here to serve a positive purpose. They're here for you. They're not against you. And they really, they're sort of gracious to us in that when we're not ready to face the truth about a given situation, projections allow us to sort of maintain our denial for a little bit. And ultimately, they just show us the parts of ourselves that need our love. That's the deepest truth behind projections. They are our soul's way of pointing out the aspects of ourselves that need our love, our care, and our attention. And when we're able to offer that love, care, and attention to those vulnerable parts of ourselves, that's when we heal. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful day. And, oh, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to join us over at our Healing Underlying Core Issues Facebook group. It's an open free group where you can connect with like-minded people and learn more about all of this, how to heal from addiction, 
depression, anxiety, trauma, all of these underlying issues. And you can also visit us at our website, as always, theclearingnw.com. Thank you so much. Have a good day.